everyone. Welcome to the Collector's Maze series. Here I'm Tim Abrams with Collector's Maze. Today we are sitting here with Seamus and Katie from the League of Enchantment. Uh, they are a nonprofit organization that really helps kids through cosplay. Uh, how are you guys doing today? So just to start, can you guys kind of give us a background of what your organization does and uh, kind of how, how your history has been and how you guys kind of got to here today? Okay. Um, well, it was started by Brittany Billinghurst uh, three, and a half, three and a half years ago. About three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it was a small, small group, about six people. They'd done a couple birthday parties. That was about it. Um, and I came on board. I'd already been doing cosplay for a couple of years. Uh, after an accident I had, I jumped into the Batman suit and I'd done a few hospital visits. I'd started working with the American Cancer Society. I ended up doing a whole bunch of relays. Um, they threw me into a radio interview, and then I did some voice for one of the commercials, stuff like that, and it just grew from there. And then when I when I jumped into the league, I had a notebook of ideas, and um, we just started implementing stuff, and it's blown up from there. Um, pretty soon after that, I met Katie um, at a con where we were at, and it just her talents, my talents work side by side. Um, she's a numbers person. I'm not. I am um, a goofball, for lack of a better term. Um, but our skill sets um, work really good with each other. And it's just grown phenomenally since then. Sure. So is there a, can you kind of explain typically what you guys do for children and everything like that and what your services are? Uh, so typically, um, we go out to hospitals, we visit kids there, um, we visit eight hospitals around Michigan, uh, we bring toys and gifts to them when we come and visit, um, something to remember the visit with their favorite superhero, so it's something tangible to remember that. Um, we also work with American Cancer Society, um, Make-A-Wish Michigan, and tons of other community um, foundations and events just to bring smiles to kids' faces. These are from a superhero, princess, Star Wars character. Honestly, any character a kid can connect with. Even furries. Even furries, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and we just try and bring smiles to kids' faces and bring hope. Yeah. Well, that's a great thing to hear. You guys are doing a lot of good work. Um, and I know that right now it's not the best opportunity to do all these things. Um, and so I'm going to ask you the COVID question, which is something that we could only ask you now. Um, what are you guys doing now that COVID has started to kind of keep doing your services and things like that? Well, when it when uh, you know the shutdown first happened, we were kind of lost. We uh, we had tons of cancellations. Mm -hmm. We usually hit 250 community events a year, where we were averaging a hospital visit every week plus other stuff, speaking engagements, uh, anti-bullying sessions at schools, meet and greets, all kinds of things like that, plus mm -hmm. conventions. We end up guesting at a lot of those. And it all just ground to a halt. So, you know, first off, you know, Katie and I were working on all the cancellations, trying to get the calendar up, trying to keep the member spirits up. We have 90 plus members we have to, you know, coordinate with. Mm -hmm. And, um, Somehow we started throwing around ideas of what we could do and we came up with care packages. Um, and so we built care packages and these things, they have a toy, they have a comic, they have coloring books, they have an activity, um, they have a leaked pamphlet, stuff like that. And then a the letter kids. from yeah. their favorite superhero too, that's kind of addressed to them. Right. And it's sent out to kids directly mm -hmm. to lift their spirits so they get nominated by parents, by caregivers, by make-a-wish advocates, by nurses, by whomever. Mm -hmm. And then we put these packages together and we ship them out. We've shipped out well over 800 packages so far mm -hmm. all across the United States and even to England to different kids. And then we started recording videos. We started doing story time videos, uh, videos for kids in the hospital or stuck at home. Mm -hmm. so we've been extremely active. Uh, we spent an entire day, uh, we turned my basement into a video studio mm -hmm. and myself and Katie and a couple of my kids and my wife, we all start recording videos, all as different characters, reading books and, and just, well, it's fun, some of it's goofy, some of it fits the character so that we can then put those out on our pages so that kids can then get story time from Batman, from Wonder Woman, from Cinderella, from 
Batgirl, Anyone, yeah. you know, all kinds of characters. It's amazing. Spider Man's is hilarious. Our spider at mm-hmm. Thor reading about potty time. Mm-hmm. What's better than Thor reading about going to the bathroom? <laughs> I mean, come on. So well, yeah, we we had to like shift, and but we found ways to make it work. Mm-hmm. You know, the care packages are huge. The interaction on social media is huge. The story time videos, all of that stuff, creates that link that we still need to carry. And you guys are doing great work, you know, even if you're not able to go in the hospital, like you said, I'm sure if I was someone in that situation, I would love a Thor potty time letter, you know, it would brighten my day 100%, I can guarantee it. Um, and so you, you guys mentioned kind of some of the content you've been working on. Um, I've seen some of it, but could you kind of explain uh, what your guys' content is kind of video wise and everything like that? really just anything uh, in general. It kind of depends on what um, the parents are requesting. So for a right. while we were doing birthday videos um, that became very hard to keep up on because we would get the requests kind of the day or two before and to throw on the suit and get all ready for it would we kind of almost need a week right. preparation right. time. Sure. Sure we can get it out in time. Um, so we did a lot of birthday videos. Mm-hmm. Um, we got requested by a couple um, family members of kids who are Make-A-Wish kids and they're struggling so we did a lot of um empowerment and encouragement mm-hmm. videos um oh, just we did to, a whole series of those we did to yeah. kind of keep up their spirits then we just did some general ones that we could put out um just to help the kids you know just in general that are right. struggling without seeing their friends especially now that school's going to be mainly online they're missing out on so much just to try and keep their spirits up and let them know that you know even superheroes are struggling during all, all right. of this so it's, you know, we throw together a video of, you know, hey, buddy, nice to see you guys. Um, hope you're doing good today. You know, Captain America says, you know, something like that mm-hmm. so that it would lift their spirits. Yep. Um, we, we've done a lot of other stuff. If you're talking about like our YouTube channel, we have like PSAs we've done mm-hmm. about different things. Sure. We've done the Who We Are videos. Um, um, Kyle Watson, who runs Nerd Story and actually put together a a documentary of the league and it really is um, pretty amazing yes. uh, it ended up in a couple um, film contests mm-hmm. called behind the mask and that one is really good it, sh- it showcases us doing panels mm-hmm. members talking about what the league is about what we've done and you know just it's very empowering mm-hmm. it's, it's something you got to watch yeah sure and you guys do a little bit more entertaining content as well can you talk about kind of the space ghost type of content you guys have been making <laughs> um so <laughs> space ghost was an <laughs> accidental thing um, it involved us uh, getting filmed by kyle and him making a comment about my voice and then me sitting down at my kitchen table with another member named samantha and us joking about space ghost to us then um coming up with ideas for space ghost and then i built a desk and it kind of snowballed from there to now where Space Ghost is actually a guest at Comic-Cons, and we do full-on interviews with celebrities, but none of them make any sense whatsoever. They're fantastic. Um, If you've never had a conversation with Ross Marquand, who played Red Skull in Avengers, about his, uh, Endgame, about his whatchamacallits and dingleberries, you haven't lived. (laughs) (laughs) It's... The interviews go off the rails. It's great. I have a list of questions. I always read through them all before an interview, and we do none of them. It always goes crazy right away. I've been hitting the head with a microphone while interviewing Ming Chen. Um, we had uh, one guest interrupt another guest, and then we ended up with like a group hug thing going on behind the podium. It was insane. Um, I interviewed Katie Lee, who was the voice of like the Smurfs and stuff, and she stuck a Yoda hat on me while we're doing the interview. We ended up doing half of it in a British accent. It was nuts. Hey, we just we have a blast with it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and actually, Katie uh, designed an outfit where she is Space Ghost's mom, and uh, we did a dating video for Space Ghost to get me off her couch and out of her damn basement so that I could find a lady for my life. It was great. <laughs> so yeah. Space Ghost has turned into a monster. It's it insane. It's, it, it's a blast. We have uh, probably seven or eight shows recorded that we haven't mm-hmm. cut edited yet that we'll, we, we need help with. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's nuts. So, well, yeah, it just turned into a monster. And it definitely 
that was the content that really caught my eye first off i'm a huge <laughs> adult swim fan i'm and really sorry perfect. oh what are you talking about sorry you're right on the par come on I'm it's like watching a revival Dude, it's, it's a blast. Hey, funny enough, we, I got to do an on stage with George Lowe, who was the voice of Space Coast Coast. Oh. And that was just, that it, was it was insane. Awesome Weird, like torturing each other. And I had a. He could barely get a word in edgewise. Oh, and nuts. typically, not many people can do that. Yeah, yeah I mean, so. George and I had many conversations before it. We discussed uh, his toilet paper usage, um, how Sylvester Stallone's poop likes to erupt from a toilet, and you have to take a gun to it and stop it. Um, <laughs> Oh, the treats at Meyer's uh, gas station are really good because they're high in carbohydrates, but then you have to hit on the cashier and let her know that you have no absolutely no stamina. So it was an interesting day. <laughs> That's to say the least, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. So um, that kind of leads into kind of uh, a pickup question I have real fast. Um can you guys give me a couple of stories from a convention or two that you thought was really fun or something like that? Um, I, I think you guys have a very unique perspective on things. So, Oh boy, gosh, there's so many weird ones. Um, what, what do you got? I, I don't I, know. I, Not from a convention. I don't, yeah. Really? Yeah. Gosh. Uh -oh. Or just anything. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Well, a couple years ago, I was at Grand Rapids comic con. I was doing Iron Man and, um, we had a couple of people want to get some pictures. So we went into a hotel next door that had these cool, like gold waterfall backdrops mm -hmm. and stuff. And I ended up wandering around in the hotel. I ended up on an elevator. I'm in a full Iron Man suit, the, cow, the, the helmet, the whole suit, the whole bit. Get off the elevator, walk out, and there's a bridal party taking pictures in a fountain. I ended up in the shoot with them, with the bride and all the flower girls. So um, they had some really, really weird bridal <laughs> pictures with Iron Man. Um, uh, There's another time we were at a convention hall for, I think it was um, like a kid's day or something. And they had a choir competition going across the hall. And I was Batman and I somehow ended up in the choir competition. So um, sure. I really, um, end up in things all the time it's yeah, just does. how my life is mm -hmm. i guess um we've been at conventions i've been dragged into guest um judging the cosplay mm -hmm. contest when i wasn't even supposed to be doing anything it's just it's weird mm -hmm. my life is weird i don't know it the really opportunities is. we have now to just talk oh, yeah. with celebrities as normal people is just it's so weird yeah yeah we, it, we, um... we've had okay so we've had um we were judging the costume contest at great lakes mm -hmm. and they had the entire well not the entire but almost the entire sesame street crew the original there. cast and i don't remember the gentleman's name but two of them came up and i'm dressed as wonder woman and i'm judging and i'm like oh my gosh i grew up watching these people and they came up to me and they're like oh my gosh i love what you do and they wanted to talk to me and i'm like i was like Four and watching you on TV, and it was it was really cool. Yeah. yeah, it's weird when the guests want to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're the new celebrities. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's so it's weird. weird. It's it's just yeah, it's kind of mind boggling mm -hmm. at times. It really is. It's fantastic yeah. though. But we have a blast. We, we absolutely. I mean, yeah. from the times at Great Lakes where we kicked on uh, music. And mm -hmm. we had like 40 people dancing in front of our like booth. Like the cha-cha slide. It was yeah. so much fun. You had like eight Wonder Womans doing the cha-cha slide. And I look over and there's a stormtrooper in the middle doing the cha-cha slide with Wonder Woman. Like, yep. it's nuts. <laughs> I, I, I just, it's crazy. And you yeah. laugh so hard and you end up leaving and you're like on cloud nine. Mm -hmm. You've had so much fun and it's elated. And then getting to do things like fundraisers for Bill Loeb's, who was, you know, he drew Wonder Woman and wrote mm -hmm. the stories for so long. And then we got to put together this group of Wonder Woman, a nine, ten, eight or nine, yeah. Wonder Woman, different versions of Wonder all Woman, different. to do a big photo shoot with him and to help with a giant fundraiser and all that stuff. And then it just we get to do amazing things, mm -hmm. and it, it's just so weird at times to try and think about it. Yeah, it's astounding. Well, do you think uh, those type of things kind of help the philosophy of your organization? Because I know you're all about helping kids and everything like that. Um, do you think? that shows through conventions and through your work and everything you do? Oh, easily, yeah. Definitely. Conventions are one of the ways that we get the most members. 
Yeah. It's because they see our interaction. They see how we are with not only our members, we have 90 plus members and there's no egos. You know, we mm -hmm. can have eight Wonder Woman at an event and Literally. there's no egos. We're all excited. We're all hanging out. We're all having fun. We're all helping each other with costumes. And people can see that they, you know, unfortunately you get a group of women all in the same ish costume and typically there's issues and we don't have that because we all want to help. And, and, you know, our members see that or people who want to become members see it and conventions are one of the best ways to get the members because they see the fun we're having, how much, you know, we bring in the kids and the families and the, you know, the, the parents are like, I'm so sorry, the kids are bothering you. like, they're not we're loving mm -hmm. this we're loving this interaction this time with them you know a lot of kids come to conventions and they've got one or two characters they really really want to see oh, yeah. when you come to our booth we most likely have one of them mm -hmm. so it's, it's interaction it's it all is. about interaction mm -hmm. it's sure. all about you kneel down to a media kit mm -hmm. meet them at their height at their level yeah. talk to them eyesight it's all about mm -hmm. you know making the parents laugh making them part of the experience mm -hmm. A lot of times the parents are there to bring the kids so the kid has the experience but if the parents have the experience too mm -hmm. it makes it so much better i had uh fun. the kids expo we did this last oh, yeah. year um there's this one little girl it's her birthday and she was so excited she got to me i was wonder woman and you were batman mm -hmm. and she kept every time she saw us she'd come and give us huge hugs and we got probably a good dozen hugs oh, from this least. little girl yeah so every time she'd walk down, down an aisle and she'd see us, just huge hugs. And have you caught the Joker? Have you seen the Joker? She wanted to make sure, because we were there to make sure the Joker didn't show up. But um, she told me, she's like, I want to be just like you. And I'm like, okay, well, you got to listen to your parents. You got to eat broccoli and you got to be good in school. Well, her mother came up to me later and she goes, I have to go to the store and buy broccoli because that's all she wants for dinner now. <laughs> At least she's getting her greens in. Right. Yeah. So. Well, um, all of that is amazing. What you guys do is amazing, uh, just straight. But can you tell us a little bit about how we as regular people can help you guys? Is there some kind of fundraising event you guys do every year or anything? About um, well, we have, so we have a donate now on both our website and our Facebook so people can donate. We regularly put up like Amazon wish lists or Amazon requests on there as well stuff that we're looking for for care package. Like right now we're struggling to find Wonder Woman action figures. All of them are being held out because the movie's not out yet. Mm -hmm. Once the movie starts being released, then you're gonna start seeing that influx of toys, but they've got the commercials out. So then you've got all these kids who are looking up to Wonder Woman and wanting those, those things mm -hmm. and we can't get them. We can't get them right now. So yeah. we can get them on Amazon, but that's about it. So that's um that's our big struggle is that one yeah. um the big do, fundraiser is the gala it is the big fundraiser we do every year is the gala we were uh we did have to postpone it this year um it is november 6th next year I think so. um we do it at eagle eye which is in bath which is by lansing michigan um we have a blast last year we almost had 300 people there yeah and, and we were at capacity we were at capacity um we have dinner and speeches and a huge silent auction, uh, oh, wine insane. pull. Um, we always have characters there from our theme. So last year was um, was Bruce Wayne's Masquerade. So it was very ritzy and very high end. And we had a few what? Batmans there. A few Batmans, but the Joker. The Joker. We the had. Joker was know, yes, the Joker was seating people. So. It was great. It was this next year. So in 2021, it's our Galactic Gala. So it is a uh, very Star Wars themed. We've got some pretty epic looking centerpieces we're working on mm -hmm. and uh, spaceships and stuff mm -hmm. on each table. It's going to be pretty sweet. So yeah, we have a blast with it. We oh, at yeah. all, you know, from the first year to the second year, we gained almost 100 people. Almost everybody from the first year wanted to come to the second year. We just we make it fun and enjoyable. We had a lot of people say that it's like a huge family reunion you actually yeah. want to go to. And here's the cool thing. Our gala, it's not people who normally go to conventions. Mm -mm. It is people who probably have never, ever been to a Comic-Con. We had sheriffs. We had TV anchors mm -hmm. there. We had the guy who's in charge of, what is it, enrollment at mm -hmm. MSU. 
yeah. um, all professors. these professors, heads of industry, yeah. construction dudes, like yeah. companies, like it's so cool. They love what we do. Yep. I mean, we had, yeah, we did have the sheriff there. And, yeah, we had well, and, actually two different sheriffs there. Yeah, um, other nonprofits. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's so fun because, and it's fun to watch those people just relax and enjoy seeing. Yeah things that they don't those normally people, see because they don't go to those conventions well, that and they're usually in the spotlight mm -hmm. and suddenly they're at a table watching us yeah and it's just and we get to do speeches mm -hmm. and our we try to bring in what's happened in the year mm -hmm. where is the league going and, and try to make it just super interactive mm -hmm. for them so that they understand us from a better viewpoint and it just, it's an incredible event mm -hmm. And you guys do a lot of good work, and I'm glad to hear that your communities are coming out there and supporting you guys. That's awesome. You know, I think nothing's better than maybe next year seeing the sheriff or the county sheriff standing right next to Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. <laughs> um, so talking about kind of the future, uh, what is the future of your guys' organization? What do you guys hope to achieve? What are you hoping to do in the next year or so? Well, boy. Bring back events, yeah, little events. by little. We have yeah. our first one back in suit tomorrow. It yep. is a school supply giveaway. Um, everyone is staying in their cars. Um, the superheroes are handing out the supplies, but we've got masks on, um, trying to social, social distance. distance. So I think a lot of the future is trying to figure out how to do those events with the social distancing, with the masks on, um, to be able to still bring those smiles out, but be safe while we do it. Mm -hmm. um, we've got another one next Saturday, which yep. is Tunnels for Towers. Um, Fantastic organization. Amazing organization. Is if, if your viewers look up anything, look mm -hmm. up Tunnels for Stop Towers. It's yes. the Stephen Siller Foundation. Stephen was a fireman at 9-11. Mm -hmm. He uh, actually had the day off on 9-11, was supposed to go to a golf outing. He saw the plane hit the first one hit and uh he lived about four and a half miles from ground zero five miles out in one of the boroughs and uh he knew he had to go help his brother he threw his golf clubs out of his car and threw his gear in his car and tried to drive to ground zero got stopped because the tunnels had been shut down so instead of giving up he threw on all of his gear and he ran three oh, miles man. through the tunnels over wow. the to ground zero and gave his life and that foundation now pays for first responders, pays their families who've mm -hmm. lost their husbands, their wives to whatever, mm -hmm. or paralyzed, and helps them rebuild their lives, build their homes, mm -hmm. takes care of them. These, it is one of the most of emotional events you'll ever go to. Yeah. They bring in guys who are at 9-11, who are at ground zero to talk. This has grown the from a grassroots. Just... Oh, signs everywhere yeah. everyone who lost their life at 9 11 every, every single firefighter yeah and you stand there and you watch firefighters in full gear run tears. just tears the 5k and they're usually one of the first ones done in full gear 70 yeah, you pounds see, it's, yeah. it's so incredible and we've got that next saturday and it's it's intense it like, it, it's hard to describe to anyone and these guys this started out as grassroots. Their first year, they had a couple hundred people show up in New York mm -hmm. for this. Now they have thirty to 50,000 people a year show up for this run in New York at Ground Zero. Mm -hmm. The little runs across the United yeah. States are already emotional. Mm -hmm. That one in New York, it, it's beyond intense. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I mean, you've got thousands of firefighters linking arms and crying. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. And we get to work and learn about some absolutely so incredible much. organizations yeah. and to be able to help them. And that one's not a kid event. It really no, isn't. Not. But those firefighters need us there. And some sure. of the people we have. The closest friends of the league are, are from that group. From that group. So yeah. we're just hoping we have, you know, more opportunities like that to just gain those events back yeah. um, and figure out ways to be in the hospital without being in the hospital, you know, maybe mm -hmm. sending videos yeah, or care packages virtual stuff. to yeah. them until it's safe for us to be back in full force. Yeah. And, you know, and speaking of like tunnels for towers over the last few years, we've all gotten to learn so much more about kids and the yeah. things that they go through being at cystic fibrosis, 
or leukemia or DIPG or working with the CWC centers, kids that go through sexual and physical trauma that we work with, we've gotten to expand our lives and expand our knowledge base on so many different levels. It's made us better as people and to get to teach our members about this and to teach others to go into the schools and talk about this stuff, mm -hmm. to bring it out into the light, to make people realize that maybe that kid in your class is struggling with leukemia. Maybe someone has this horrible home life that they're dealing with on a daily basis. It has made us better as people. Yeah, and, and, and just, it, it's just astounding to me at times, the knowledge we've gained over the last few years. Mm -hmm. Sure. And with that knowledge, um, it, could you give a little bit of advice to people uh, that are like me who are, you know, not going through those things, but you know, we might know somebody that could be going, what, what have you guys learned that we could better ourselves as people? Passion. Passion and, but, but ask them, you know, yeah. ask them what they're going through. Cause a lot of times when they're struggling with stuff, they want someone to talk to because a lot mm -hmm. of times people are scared to. Yeah. talk to them and they just need it. And you're like, Hey, I know you're struggling with this. Can you explain to me what your biggest struggle is or what, you know, something I wouldn't see. Cause a lot of times, you know, we see a lot of influx of like yeah. the autoimmune disorders and they look like normal people, but they're hurting inside and you just don't know why. And so you just don't judge a book by its cover and, and just right. ask, I see you're struggling. What's your, what's your biggest struggle today? What can I do to help you? Or is there a link that you can give me so I can learn more and understand your struggles? Understanding what people are going through, understanding what people need is a huge thing. Don't be scared to ask questions or just let them know you're there, that you will help, that you will just you know, open up that line of communication, open it up. Let them know that you have compassion in your heart, that you're willing to help in whatever yeah. way that's huge. I struggle with PTSD. You know, a lot of people don't understand it. And until I can talk about it or open up a line of communication with somebody, they're not going to get it. Once they get it, then it makes it easier. It makes it easier for me and it makes it easier for them. Mm -hmm. Then they know what my struggles are, what I'm dealing with. And it's the same with all these kids, kids of sexual and physical trauma. They've been through some of the most horrible things in their lives. You can talk to them be at their level, communicate, it's, it's going to help. Yeah. Show them compassion, show them love and kindness and understanding. Find out what they like. Talk to a kid about their music, about the superheroes they like, the princesses they like, the TV shows they watch, the things that make them happy. Mm -hmm. Bring that stuff out. It's, it's huge. It's what our world needs. We're missing that stuff. In I agree, especially right now. It'd be more than welcome, I, I imagine. Um, well, I, we're near the end of our time here, and I really appreciate you guys talking. Is there anything else that you guys would want to say, you know, um, anything coming up? You want to plug yourselves or anything? Well, we told you about the two events we've got yeah. right now. Um, Take a look at our pages. That's yeah. always big. We, our website, yep. leagueofenchantment.org, our Facebook, League of Enchantment. Uh, we're always posting new things. Yep. Social media is big yep. for us. We try to keep everything updated. Um, we're still taking care package requests. So if yeah. you know a kid who needs to pick me up, we do it from two to 15. Mm -hmm. And all we need to know is their name, address, age, and, and like. favorite character. And we most likely got something for them. So. Yeah, we've got care packages sitting here for Avengers and Batman and Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel and Spider-Man and Elsa and, and Princesses and, and Minecraft even Minecraft and, and Fortnite. Fortnite. And I mean, we got them all made, covered. Ready yep. made already. Plus bunch of other stuff that we can throw into a care package and make it special cool letters <laughs> plus we write stuff ourselves yeah. so you know if somebody really really wants a space ghost care package i'm sure we can throw it together i don't need one <laughs> sure do. do all the time yeah <laughs> well hey yeah, thank I mean, yeah just everybody needs to have fun yep. make people laugh enjoy the life that we have don't dwell on the negatives just yep. seriously make people laugh it, it's not that hard wow that that's a beautiful statement and an amazing way to kind of end things here. I really appreciate you guys talking to me and talk to us at the Collector's Maze. Uh, you guys are the League of Enchantment. Uh, people can find you all over socials, everywhere. Their YouTube channel is great. One of my favorites um, right now. 
um been binging you guys' stuff yeah, so um thank you guys for talking to us really appreciate it yeah. thank you for thank having you. us